Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good to see your faces today. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 The Lord has been good to all of us. Yes, he, yes, he has. Yes, he has. Yes, amen. He has. amen. Let's open up a prayer and get started with the uh, round robin. And the first person that's coming up is going to be Elder Carter. Amen. Let's open up a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us the way that you have, Father thank God. You. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace, your mercy, your kindness. Thank you for this study, Lord, that we're able to come here, Lord, and, 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 and get your word, Father God, and receive it. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we're able to pull up to your table and eat the fat of the land. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that others would just come on out, Father God, release this fear that they're dealing with, Father God, and understand that, hey, we're using wisdom here. Yes. yes Lord. And Father God, they know that they can come on Jesus. out and they can get your word. As the yes. word tells us to not forsake the assembly of ourselves. Yes. Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you. Everyone thank that goes you. forth today, Father God. The, the word will flow from their bellies like rivers, uh, like rivers of living water. Yeah. And Father God, we will be planted by those rivers bearing yes, fruit Lord. right now, Father God. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on up, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, tonight, <laughs> got a little something for y'all. You know, it's funny how um, people want things and, you know, they're always looking for something and then they wonder why they don't always get what they're looking for or what the things that they want. So tonight, my title is, if you want to receive more, give more. Amen. Amen. If you want to receive more, give more. And that's in everything. It's not just in monetary. It's not just in materialistic things. It's, you know, it's in everything in our life. You know, we often hear the term, if you want friends, show yourself friendly. Amen. 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 And you know, if, if you if you want to be blessed, bless somebody. You know, it, it works in every area of our lives. Amen. You know, you, you walk around and wonder why nobody's smiling or speaking to you. Have you smiled or spoke to anybody? Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling how it is. Amen. So Luke 6 and 38 is my talk, target scripture. Amen. And I'm reading the King James Version. And it says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and run it over. So shall men give into your bosom for with the same. Amen? So, give and it should be given unto you. Now, some people say, well, I don't have anything to give. Really? Are, are you serious? You don't have anything to give. How about a kind word? Amen? Amen? I, I mean, that's free. That's something that God has given us. Kind words. All throughout the Bible, kind words to those that truly receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior, to, to those that believe this word. Now, trust me, there is some words in here that might hurt somebody's feelings in the Bible because the truth sometimes hurt. That's the only thing that will hurt your feelings is if you don't want to receive the truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. And too many people look at the Bible and, and, and if they, you know, misunderstand the Bible because they have not been taught how to understand the Bible, then they can truly be hurt. You know, religion hurts people a lot because they tell you just the opposite of certain things in the Bible. You know, they always, you know, is it this mic? Back it up. No. Okay, amen. You know, uh, a lot of times, you know, they're, you're being misled or misguided by religion. Amen. But the true word of God, when you are truly understanding the word, because you have studied to show thyself approved unto God, as in 2 Timothy 2.15 says, mm -hmm. if, you have, if you are in a Bible teaching, Bible preaching church that will actually break everything down to you to the lowest form, 
I'm talking about even the youngest in spirit can understand. Amen. This is where you want to be. So that you can understand that how am I going to get more when I'm giving more? People don't understand that. See, because they're, they're, it's their own thinking, stinking. Like that. Thinking, stinking. Stinking, stinking, stinking. I wanted to that. Yeah, we got but However, it. however, you know, with our own logic, we just don't see it. We only see it the way the world shows it. You know, the world tells you the more you keep, the more you'll have. Mm -hmm. But quite, you know, the opposite. It shows that, and we've shown million, million, many illustrations of how if someone had a $20 bill in their hand and they clenched their fist so tight because they don't want nobody to get it, well, I can't give you anything either. You want to hold on to this 20 when I want to give you 100 That's pretty simple. But the world has not caught on to that yet. The world is still hanging on to logic. Today, I want you to understand that in every area of your life, when you are out and about, and if you don't see somebody smiling or speaking to you, ask yourself the question, or examine yourself. That's what I should say. Examine yourself. If you're really sitting around and you got that much time on your hands to recognize that no one spoke to you, well, no one said, hey, how you doing? No one said, God bless you. No one said, Jesus loves you. Uh, check yourself. <laughs> Did you say it to somebody? Because I'm quite sure if you opened your mouth and said something, you'll get a whole lot of replies back. Oftentimes, and this is a true story, oftentimes I have walked into stores or places in my life and just speaking to one person about Jesus, I see you about Jesus, I had a whole crowd of folks standing around listening. I was a fire starter. I was that match. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Doug. Amen. I, I don't know if you had already said this or not, but the Bible talks about where it says, uh, show yourself friendly to gain a friend. Yes, that's it. And, stuff. And, and as you were talking about, have you, are you walking around looking like you've been sucking on lemons and like you just mad at the world? Or are you walking around with a smile on your face? Are you walking around uh, making yourself presentable to where you're uh, a person that someone can be comfortable <laughs> of saying hello to. You know, hey, how you doing, how you nice day? Or are you walking around looking like you weren't ready to jump on them or, or something like that? So you, you gotta check how your facial is and how, your, uh, how you are. You have to first be encouraged to encourage somebody. Amen, amen, amen. Very good, Elder, go ahead, Pastor. You know, To, okay, gotcha. You know, the Lord always, if you look at nature, the Lord uses nature to mimic spiritual, the spiritual realm. Amen. And there's a lot that we can learn by watching nature. And just as you're saying, you know, everything that we give is like a seed. Amen. And, Amen. <laughs> you know, Genesis 8 and 22 says, while the earth remaineth, Seed, time, and harvest, in cold and heat, in summer and winter, in day and night, shall not cease. Now, how long will we have seed, time, and harvest? As long as the earth remains. Amen. So that means Amen. whatever we do, if, you listen, if you're going to plant or sow grass seed, then you're going to get grass. Amen. You can't plant good and get evil. You can't plant evil and get good. You can't plant hate and get love. You can only plant love to get more love. And the Amen. thing about it is, when you plant one seed, you don't get back one seed. That's why the scripture says what you said, uh, with the, uh, the scripture we started off with, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over as men should give unto your bosom. We, we are always going to get a bigger harvest. Amen. You know, you go to the store and you and you buy, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say you buy some apple seed, right? You want to plant you an apple tree and you go over there and you, you put seed in the ground. You don't just get a tree with one apple. <laughs> You 
you get a tree with many, many apples. And within each of those apples are many seeds. Now you just plant one, but now you have something that is now innumerable. Amen. Because you planted one. So when you show yourself, just like you were saying, when you show yourself friendly, then you'll see you and you get a lot of friends. Amen. You know, one of the most contagious things in the body of Christ, whether we know it or not, and religion has really messed this up, <laughs> is a smile. Amen. Amen. People be in church and they and they they trying to look serious, trying to look a certain Fair way. Sure. And you know the Lord. If you go through this word and you see how the Lord is, if you know who God is, you'll see that God is all about in jo about joy, about Amen. love, about peace, about happiness. About you know what He says. The Scripture tells us that. Oh, not, not, no, you okay. <laughs> The Scripture says, "Laughter is like medicine." To the song. It will heal you. That's because that's what God was about. He, he was about us enjoying ourselves, laughing, smiling. And when you're smiling for somebody, know that you always get a smile. But it is contagious. Amen. 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 And it is. Thank you, Pastor, for that. You know, I, I mean, in every area, like I, I said earlier, in every area of our life, if we would give into whatever it is that you want, you would get more than you need. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use this because I know time is short, but I'm gonna use this, and a lot of people like talk about the tithe. Amen. So Come on, good. Malachi three talks about bring ye all the tithe to the storehouse that that should be meet in my house, saith the Lord, mm -hmm. and prove me now, and see when I open up the window of heaven, pour you out a blessing, and you won't have room enough to receive it. Listen, God only asked you for ten percent. That's all He asked you for. That was all He required of you. That's a small seed. Small. Listen, listen. <laughs> And in everything we do, it's always the smallest that will bring the most. Don't you know a small smirk on your face can bring laughter to somebody's soul? Somebody look at you and be like, this is just wait at me. You smile at me. You know, but let's look at what it's doing. It's changing the atmosphere. Amen? Amen. And, and how be it that something as small as 10% can bring you so much that you won't have room enough to receive. That's where I want to be all the time. Amen. Go ahead. You know, he, he, got, he parallels that with, with this with uh faith. Amen. That's a grain of mustard seed. A grain of mustard seed that will move mountains. It's the same way. That seed that we have, that little bit that we give, we give back, wow. that ten percent opens the door for a mountain of finances to come into your life. Amen. And it's funny you say it that it parallels with faith because that is where it's at. You have to have faith in God to know that if you gave like God asked you to gave, that he's going to do above and beyond. He's going to do just what he said. Pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. But you, listen, the 10%, okay, listen, because you got to remember what the Bible talks about, how you give that 10%. You can't be giving it with old grudging attitude. Oh, I got to give my tithe. No, oh, I'm sorry. I gotta pay my tithe. Like a bill. Like a bill. I gotta pay my tithe. Like no, God never said pay tithe. He said give. And it should be given unto you. God is not a bill collector. You do not put him in the same category as the bill collectors. But that's what people are doing today. People are taking their tithe and they write it down. You know, okay, well, these all the bills I gotta pay this month. Um, uh, first of all, oh, oh my, my house, no, my rent. Electric, gotta have that. Water, gotta have that. Uh, 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 cable. Phone, tithe. Wrong. After all of that, now you come down to tithe, you are wrong. You're dead wrong. According to scripture. According to scripture, you are dead wrong because he wants the first. Amen. And that, that's, matter of fact, ever since Genesis, he wanted the first. Your best. Amen. So, amen. So, we have to understand that we have, if you're putting God down the line, in your list of bills, that's the same way you put him in your life. That's how you look at God. He's after everything else in your life. When all else fails, read the book. <laughs> read the book. When all else fails, call on Jesus. All else wouldn't fail if you called him first. Amen. Amen. We got to understand we need to put God first in everything. Don't 
you know that everything that we do, just like I said, if you want more, give more. Listen, get more of God. Whoo, praise God. You get more of God, and you'll have more to give. Amen. 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 You get more of God because, see, he gives it to us freely. That's the whole thing. He gives it to us freely. Free will to love him. So love him first. Amen. He did it already. He showed us. He's the greatest example that we can ever follow. He loved us first. So we need to love just like he loves. Amen. And if we can show the love that he has for us to others, Y'all don't know how, 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 how infected this world would be. We, we spread faster than COVID. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, seriously. COVID taking folks out. Love is bringing them back to life. You want more? Give more. Learn how to give in every area. Start, listen, it's real simple, real small. If, if you ain't ready to give some money yet, just give a smile. Give a kind word. Come on. I see you. Go ahead and preach before the time went out. You know what it is? It, hey, you know why we give to the Lord? We, we, you know, a lot of people say, well, you give because you were commanded to give. No, we give because we love him. Amen. We give because we love him. And he Amen. gives to us because we, he, because he loves us. Amen. 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 And so I don't give, I don't because give he because me. he commanded me to give. I don't give because I'm going to give something because I, I want God to give me more back. No, I give because I love him. Amen. And because of that, he just opens up the floodgates of heaven and he pours out a blessing upon me where I don't have room enough to receive. And we give because we know who he is. Amen. 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 Trust him. We know what God does. Beep, beep, beep. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, number four. Amen. You know, she said amen. 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 I'm sad. I got to hear it. She said amen. No, you don't. I'm talking about me. I'm giving you some healing, right? In the name of Jesus. There you go. Love you, sis. You are energetic. <laughs> <laughs> you are charismatic. Full of the spirit. Amen. Happy, joyous. Ready to give us some words. Amen. 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 You know. And this is a word that we all, we've been talking about for, woo, for all the time. Amen. Okay? And Amen. It's, my title is Keep the Devil in His Place. Woo! That's under your feet. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was thinking and I said, you know, there's times when we feel helpless against trials, tribulations, and temptations that the devil put in our path. But what we fail to realize is that we come up with these excuses. Mm. And the best one is the devil made me do it. Wow. Okay. Girl, girl, day. Yep, girl, <laughs> day. Put it out there. The devil made me do it. And what we have to realize is that the devil has no power. You know. Amen. He has no power. You know. We, we, we can fight those fiery powers that he put in front of us. Amen. It's just that we have to just keep it in our, I'm kidding. We have to just keep it in our, our, our mind, yeah. you know, and in our hearts that we know where he belongs. Mm -hmm. You know, he belongs under our feet. We got that <laughs> <under our> feet. <laughs> Go ahead, Master. Amen. 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 I, I had to get it out. I'm sorry. <laughs> The battlefield is in the mind. And yes. that's, you know, Joyce Meyer wrote a book uh, about that. But the battlefield is in the mind. And that's where, where the devil attacks everybody at. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, he, he made me do this. Well, the devil only has the power of suggestion. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to act upon that suggested uh, word or whatever it is that he gives us. That suggested feeling, that suggested act is whatever he suggests, you know, it, it's up to us to give him power. He has no power unless we give it to him. There you go. He has no authority unless we give it to him. Amen. You know, when he attacked, when he came to Jesus, when Jesus uh, was on the mount, and you know, he, first thing he did was try to get Jesus to doubt who he was. Mm -hmm. You know, if thou be the Son of God, mm -hmm. command. 
eating stones to become bread, bread you know. And, and, <laughs> and he was suggesting that Jesus do this. Now yeah. Jesus, he could have did it, but he didn't do it. Why? Because Jesus knew that the, your, your power is in suggesting. And if I don't do what you suggest, I got you. Amen. Amen. And, and it's up to us, like you said. <clears throat> it's in our mind, you know. So you know, sometimes I, I struggle. Well, I'm not going to say I struggle. And sometimes I, you know, I hear things. And I, you know, and I have to decipher. Mm -hmm. Is this the right thing? Is this the wrong thing? Because I know God is going to lead me in the right path. Right. Right. So if it's wrong, then I'm, I have to realize that that's not God. That's not of God. Mm -hmm. As you know, as a Christian, I have to be able to put it in the right spot. Amen. So that if I go to the left to the left, when I should be going right, then I'm following the devil, which I'm not going to do because he's Amen. under my feet. Amen. 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 And I'm, I'm glad you went this way because you got to understand that because we have the authority over the devil already, and, we, and when we know the word, see, now we have the advantage. You know, even, now, the thing about it is, temptations are going to come. It's out there. Evil is all about us. It's all around us. It's going to come. You know, the Bible also says that, um, oh, Lord. I'm trying to get <laughs> Amen, amen. You know, we're going to be tempted. Yes. You know, uh, you know, I'm looking for it. Oh, stop, stop. Stop playing around. <laughs> when we're talking about not being tempted, but no weapons formed against us shall prosper. Mm -hmm. But the weapons will form, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. They're not going to prosper. As long as we're standing on the word of God. Yeah. As long as we're using this word to fight, just like Jesus used the word when he was in the, you know, being tempted of the devil. He used the word right back at him. And he wasn't overtaken. But the devil came. He, he tried to tempt him. But as Pastor was saying, Jesus didn't fall for it because he knew who he was. We have to know who we are when these things come at us. We need to know how to dig into the word and use the word so that we can keep the devil, as you say, in his place under our feet. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, and that's why I love the dancers so, so much. Let's get on my nerves. I love them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get on a lot that's what you love. <laughs> but you know, she always like um, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I, I I go into areas where, um, like for instance, with songs or anything like that. I um struggle and she always said, move Pat out the way, you know. And sometimes I, I make it hard for myself. <laughs> we all do. I make it hard for myself. And that's one of my my um my I'm things that I'm man. overcoming. Amen. Amen. I'm overcoming it. Because I know it's nothing but the devil holding me back. Or trying to. That's trying to hold me back. That's right. Let me rephrase that. I know that's nothing but the devil trying to hold me back. But I always say in my mind, I got the victory. That's right. I got the victory. That's right. And I'm going to keep saying I got the victory. I may not get it this time, but I'm going to get it the next time. Amen. I'm going to keep going forward. I'm not going to go back. Amen. You know, and that's what we have to do. That's how we got to keep this devil in his place. We got to let him know he's not before us. He's behind us or beneath us. Amen. Amen. And we have to understand that. And, and, and one of the things is, is he doesn't come as something, you know, a lot of people think, and this is funny because this is in the church. Yeah. People think he coming as this red demon with these horns and a pitchfork and tail. his long tail. With it. You know what? It, it, it amazes me how many people in the church believe this is what the devil looked like. And the Bible says when he comes, he comes like, an angel of light. Mm -hmm. So he comes to something that's good to your flesh, mm -hmm. something that your flesh desires, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's, it's something that in, in everybody, and that's the whole thing. When he, uh, when Jesus, when he got finished tempting Jesus, the Bible said that he left for a season. Yep. And so he always comes back. 
He always comes back. The thing is, we have to continue to stand. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that you won't get knocked down. Don't make that mistake. Don't think that you miss or Mr. Perfect. Come on now. And you won't get knocked down. Because see, if you were Miss or Mr. Perfect, then you would be Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. But you are not. We are the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. And Jesus is working in us. And he gave us free will. And he'll sit back and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to let you learn a lesson today. <laughs> and, and, but that's why he tells us in Deuteronomy, uh, what is it, 30 and 19, that, hey, I said before you, blessings and curses, life and death, choose life. Now that we are under grace, I've said before you blessings and curse. Now we can't fall up under a curse. Amen. All right? We can't fall up under a curse. So we have one way to go. <laughs> blessings and, and, and we can't go by the cursings. Huh? Life, we've already conquered death because we're in Jesus. Amen. 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 So we only have a way to go to choose life. So we need to, to we, there's going to be times when he comes back. Don't beat yourself up. That's why the Bible says just man may fall seven times, but he gets back up. Yes. So don't, Amen. you know, a lot of people, they get upset and they feel ashamed because they, they lose a battle to, hey, I played football, you know, I, play, I, I boxed when I was a teenager, and I, I lost some battles. <laughs> You know, and and get up. Hey, you know what I mean? It's it's but you have to keep going. Mm -hmm. You have to get up and you have to keep going. Learn about the enemy and you can overcome the enemy. Amen. 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 God, amen. 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 Uh, keep the devil in his place, as Pastor said, you have to learn about the enemy and you can keep him in his place, mm -hmm. right? Well, knowing the greatest thing about the devil is that he's trying to attack your destiny. Amen. Mm -hmm. You may not see yourself the way that God sees you right now, but the devil does too. He <laughs> sees that you are meant to be powerful. Mm -hmm. and you're great That's and good. that you That's have, good. that there's something on this earth that you're here to do, and he's trying to disrupt all of that. Amen. Amen. But I heard you also say that in song, let me just song, because that was your example, that um, you know the enemy comes and he just really messes with you. And you remind yourself all the time that you have the victory. But you do have the victory. It may not be the way you thought it was going to work, but it's just all grandiose. But the fact that you kept singing, you kept working, and you didn't give up, and you still did what was asked of you, you have the victory. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that you have to be reminded of. Yeah. Amen. 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 And sometimes, you know, it, it takes our brothers and our sisters to Amen. remind us to. Yeah, good point. Because, Amen. you know, um, I can tell myself that sometimes, you know, and I know what I'm saying, but I don't feel it. But then when I, a brother come up and to me, not even knowing what's going on with me, the, yeah, yeah, get yeah. that confirmation or that sister, get that confirmation, then I know, well, okay, now I got it, mm -hmm. you know? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we, we tell ourselves, you know, I got victory, we ain't got nothing. So <laughs> 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 you just talking. We just talking. We just we just, just put it out there. You know? Yeah, you have to you have to believe it. You know, and if you don't believe it, then it's not gonna you're not gonna be victorious. The scripture tells us, you know, the scripture tells us to cast down every evil imagination and bring every thought under yes. the submission of Christ. Yes. And that's the thing. You, you know, the enemy, that's what he suggestion, right? Suggestion. suggestion, your imagination. You know, you, you can't how's the old adage go? It says that you 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 can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from setting up a nest on top of yeah. your head. Yeah, there you, you go. You know what I mean? There you go, that's right. The government's always there. This, this the world is here. And but we we not of the world, we are in the world. Uh -huh. And so we, we have there are things that we we have authority over. Even the enemy, we have more authority than him. Now, this is not being taught in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people give the devil too much power. Mm -hmm. And because they give the devil so much power, that you know, they wonder why they're, they're falling so much to him. Yep. It's because they're giving him, again, the only way that he has power is if you give it to him. Amen. 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 
Amen. It's awesome what we were talking about. Uh, Pastor was talking about earlier about the season of leaving and coming back. Because oftentimes people within the body of Christ, they get to a point where they get complacent. And they get comfortable to where the words, and especially the ones that are set up in like religious churches, they get put and they start using the word as like a cliche, as a saying and stuff, like you said, with no belief behind it. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. when the enemy comes back around for that season, yeah. to where you're thinking, oh, well, I've already defeated this area, then all of a sudden you get overtaken in that area again, because it comes back. Mm -hmm. The devil does not stop. But what happens is you got comfortable and got complacent in that area. It's like, oh, well, he can't get me again. He's not going to get me. And then you up under that religion and stuff and start just using the word as a cliche with no faith behind it, then it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. devil in this place. I love my little war room board. And um, the evangelist Hall had gave out a, a sermon. You have already won your battle. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that one is bold, right? I <laughs> see it. Because the enemy does come back in these little seasons. And to keep my mind from feeling like I'm being attacked or, or I feel like I'm defeated, when I look that way, that's the main thing I see on my board is you have already Battle. I'm like, why am I going through this again? <laughs> I've already won. Amen. But understanding where your foundation is, where you get fed, mm. what you are eating, because some of us come to church and we don't eat nothing. Mm. We don't mm. eat nothing. I'm fasting. Some people are picky eaters. <laughs> Time to get off that I, I can be honest, I'm a picky eater. <laughs> and sometimes I know, sometimes I be feeling like the food is stale, but it's the enemy trying to throw me off my course because what's going forth is meant for me and I need to listen but he's trying to distract me so we do need to keep the enemy in his place amen and, and you're right about that and you know while you was talking I don't know why it just came to my mind but you know how um, a lot of people just don't want to get out of bed to come to church <laughs> they got that power suggestion going on you know because yeah. I know there's a lot of mornings. I don't even want to go to work. Amen. But I said, you know what? <laughs> Devil, you a liar. Amen. I'm getting up and going to work. Amen. Devil, you a liar. I'm getting up and going to church. Amen. It might be a minute or two late, but I'm going to get there. Amen. Because Amen. I need to be there. Mm -hmm. Amen. To fight you. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. You know, to fight you. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. What was number 10? She didn't give us We can't get it. You ain't gonna give it. She ain't gonna give it. I was gonna give her. I was gonna give Ephesians 1 19 to 23. You're holding up part right now. Thank you. Okay. There was quite a few scriptures given now. Yeah. Good evening, church. Good evening. The title I'm going with tonight is Freedom in Christ. Amen. We know that John 8, 36 says, If the Son shall sell us free, then we are free indeed. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Galatians 5. I'll be reading in the new translation. Galatians 5, starting with verse 1. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free <laughs> and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Listen. I, Paul, tell you this, if you are counting on uh, circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. Can't help you. I say it again, if you are trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you are trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, 
you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from his grace. Mm. Mm. Yes, Master. <laughs> I'm glad you went there because this in this in the scripture tells you right there in uh, Galatians 5, and you just read it, verse 4. This is the definition of falling from grace. Amen. When a person when a person uh sins, does that mean they fell from grace? No, no. it does not. No. But when a person goes back to the law, and you know and it's funny because when you go back to the law, what you're saying is the blood of Jesus wasn't good enough. Amen. Amen. And by saying the blood of Jesus wasn't good enough, that's saying that you don't believe in Jesus and you have fallen from grace. And it amazes me in how many churches today try to teach you to follow the law, the law of Moses. They always take you back to the Ten Commandments. And try to get you to follow the Ten Commandments to the T, even though that there was 613 commandments all together. And, and, and they, they, they teach you these, these laws, this, the law of Moses, and then they tell you that you're living under grace. But only thing they're doing is teaching people how to fall from grace. And just as, like the scripture said, if you can't keep one, they will keep all of them. If you can't keep one, then you haven't kept none of them. Amen. If you can't keep one, you haven't kept none of them. And that's why we're under grace, and grace is all about the law of love. Yes. Amen. 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 And to break it down, what it was saying in Galatians 5, 1 to 4, Paul was saying that false teachers were telling them that to add works of the law to faith in Jesus in that. order to truly be right with God. Now let's go to Galatians 2, 4 to 10. Yes, sir. Well, let's, since you put it out there, let's talk about it. Oh, I will. I got let's let's talk okay. about it. We're going to talk about it a little bit. So, okay. Yeah. We'll so here talk we're about talking it. about uh, when, when, he was, when they were trying to get them to mix the law with faith, the faith in Jesus. Isn't that what happens today? And yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes, yes. You know, people are still, believe it or not, people are still being told they have to be circumcised on, you know, on a day in order to be uh, a part of the fold. Uh -huh. People are still being told that they need to keep the Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> they need to keep the Sabbath on a certain day mm -hmm. in order for them to have a true relationship with Jesus. That's baloney. Jesus in, in the law, you, you can't have what you can't follow Jesus and follow the law. Sir, it's an oxymoron. I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. Let me do 10, then I'm gonna go there, sir. <laughs> Please. Please. Thank you. <laughs> All right. It was um, two, four, ten. I'm sorry, getting ahead of you. That's all right, sir. I knew you was going to go there. Okay, four. Even that question came up only because of some so-called Christians, they're false ones, really, who were sacredly brought in. They sneaked in to spy on us and to take away the freedom we have in Christ Jesus. They wanted to enslave us and force us to follow their Jewish regulations. But we refused to give in to them for a single moment. We wanted to preserve the truth of the gospel message for you. And the leaders of the church have nothing to add to what I was preaching. By the way, their reputation as great leaders made no difference to me. For God has no favor. Instead, they saw that God has given me the responsibility of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as he's given Peter the responsibility of preaching to the Jews. For that same God who works through Peter as the apostle to the Jews also worked through me as the apostle to the Gentiles. Number nine. In fact, James, Peter, and John, who were known as pillars of the church, recognized the gifts God has given me, and they 
accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. They encouraged us to keep preaching to the Gentiles while they continued to work with the Jews. Their only suggestion was we keep on helping the poor, which I had always been that eager to do. Amen. Now, Amen. let's go to where Pastor wanted to go. <laughs> okay? We are justified in before God. Way. That's in Galatians 3, 23-29. We'll read that later. Paul repeatedly said to seek God's approval by following the law of Moses, which made Christ dead, uh, who died for our sins, worthless. To accept circumcision made Christ of no help to us. This is a dire remark and one that need to be carefully understood. Amen. Okay, this comment was specially given in the context of a group of false teachers who pressured new non-Jewish Christians to be circumcised in order to be welcomed into Christ's family, which Pastor had said. <laughs> now, look here. Even Jesus was circumcised under the law. Mm -hmm. Every Hebrew in Old Testament got circumcised. But here's the point Paul's trying to make. That is, that is either salvation is through faith in Christ alone, mm -hmm. or it is through circumcision and the law. And it cannot be both. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, now. In additions of, any additions of work of any kind is not the same as a gospel of salvation by grace through faith. And that scripture is uh, Romans 11 and 6. Write it down, okay? Amen. Amen. Romans 11 and 6. Yes. Romans 11 and 6. To choose circumcision for the purpose to make sure you are saved is to reject faith in Jesus as the only sufficient payment for sin. Amen. Amen. We're going to hold on to Jesus. Circumcision is going to make no matter. Go ahead, Elder. That's just Amen. That's just why I keep it so. This is the problem. <laughs> there you go, right there. This is the problem. You know, religion is still, like, as we were saying, they're still teaching the law, which no one that is being led by religion is receiving the freedom of grace through Christ. They don't see that Jesus died for us and for all of our sin. They don't see that because religion is steadily pushing their sin on them. They're still holding them accountable for something that they did years ago. They're still holding them accountable for a thought that they had in their heads. You can't escape it when you're under religion. The only way you can escape it is to be free through Christ Jesus. Just like the scripture says in John 8, 32 and 36. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. Amen? Amen. So we have to understand that there are so many people that we see on a daily basis walking this earth that are in bondage to religion. Because they have not came to the understanding of grace through Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, I talked about Romans 11 and 6. I'm going to read it, though. Go ahead. Go ahead, evangelist. This is really good. Amen. You know, and it just brings me back to what Elder was saying. There are so many people that's walking around, and they're so caught in bondage. But, you know, I love how God always works it together because we started out with if you want more. You got to give yeah. more. And see, the way that you get more, which is your true understanding, because in all of your getting, get an understanding, Amen. is to put yourself in place. You have to go where there's someone that is teaching you God's word with no opinion added to Amen. it. Because God don't need help. Right. Amen. Amen. And see, when you get to that place, then you don't get caught up in your head and you want to make everything logically correct. Mm that allows the devil to be able to constantly cause you to question God's word versus you just truly believing in God's word and knowing that Jesus is who he is. Amen. He is, a, yes, he came as a carpenter, but baby, he way more than that. Amen. Amen. And I have, and it's funny that so many people say that. Yes, he was a carpenter and he was a fisherman. He was just like a prophet to others. No, baby. 
He he what he came as that, but I need you to continue to read the story. You stopped off somewhere. You need some pages. I got it for you. And that's the issue that so many people are having, and my heart goes heavy for them because I always tell people at my job, they say, Shante, well, you you always talk about what Jesus does. This you take what we talk about and turn it around for God. I said, baby, because what the devil meant for bad, God will always turn it around for my good. Amen. There will never be a situation where God can't be uplifted Amen. in it. And I tell them, I would rather live a good life Amen. and find out that there isn't a heaven than to live a horrible life and then have a horrible death. Amen. 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 Okay, if I uh, read here real quick here. Uh, Romans 11 and 6. I'm reading a new translation, okay? And since it was through God's kindness, then it is not by their good works. For in that case, God's grace will not be what it really is, free and understood. Undeserved. Undeserved, yes. So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of God they are looking for so earnestly. Also, right now, in this time, like Pastor Sam, People have not found it. Go ahead, Elder Locke. Hey Amen. Uh, I want to read a uh, scripture real quick. Um, and then I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to read uh, Romans 2 and 29, New Living Translation. That's Romans 2 and 29. And the reason is, no, a true Jew, which we can say now us as well, no, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God, and a true circumcision is not a cutting of the body, but a change of heart produced by God's spirit. Whoever has that kind of change seeks praise from God, not from people. Mm. Now, I know was talking about true Jew, but guess what? It means us as well. Mm -hmm. true children. It is talking about now you can say the true children of God, because that is us. It, it's not the cutting of the body, because guess what? We aren't under the law. We're under Amen. grace. Amen. So it, it talks about the renewing of our mind and how our and talks about all the issues of life flows through the heart. Hey, it's God's spirit that, that does all <laughs> the changing and takes our sin, which is red as scarlet, and makes it white as snow. Amen. 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 Yes, go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead, Pastor. We got a minute left. But you know what? And that's why that's why Jesus told the uh the disciples to beware of the Leaven or the yeast yes. of the Pharisees and Sadducees, and what he was talking about wasn't bread. Matthew sixteen six. He said, "How do you think I'm talking about bread? You don't have any faith." He was talking about the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The teaching yes. Yes. we got a lot of that going on today, and that's why in Romans fourteen it tells us. Romans fourteen talks about that where people are doing things under the law, and God is saying, "Hey, you know what?" Okay, since so you're doing, well, well, he 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 taking us on out, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I ain't rushing. All right, Romans fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to four, Romans fourteen. Uh, one really quick. Romans fourteen. Sir. Yes, sir. Romans fourteen and one. I'm reading right, New Living Translation. Right. He got time. Uh, yeah, he got time. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. this stuff, yeah, Romans 14, because the stuff that we're going to talk about right here is what's being taught out there. You know, and people are afraid to go and enjoy life because we got all these Pharisees mm -hmm. teaching people that you got to live by the law. I can remember we were here and we had some woman stand up in our pulpit talking about she don't go to movies. Like, it was this thing that just made her so holy. Yes, you know, and it did. It seemed it made, she, wanted to, the, she wanted to look really holy, but she looked really silly. <laughs> you know, because we knew her, and I'm like, okay, every TV show you watching at your house was at the movies. Yep. Amen. Amen. Romans 14, 1, and it, it says, except Christians who are weak in faith. Yeah. I'm reading New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. And don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. And that's what we get caught up in, right? Yep. Yep. For instance, one person believes it's all right to eat anything, but another believer who has a sense of conscience will eat only vegetables. Now, now, this ain't talking about your, your health purposes. This is talking about people who do it as, okay, well, I, you know, I, I, I have to do it for a religious reason. I have to do it to look holier than yeah. the next person, okay? Yeah, I, and I have to do it to move the hand of God. 
So I'm going to do this Daniel fast so I can move the hand of God. Okay. Verse 3, those who think it is all right to eat anything must not look down on those who won't. And those who won't eat, eat certain foods must not condemn those who do. For God has accepted them. Who are you to condemn God's servant? They are responsible to the Lord. So let him tell them whether they are right or wrong. The Lord's power will help them do as they should. And if we keep going down, we'll see, you know, just look. In the same way, something one day is more holy than the other day. Just talking about the Sabbath. And, you know, you got Seventh-day Adventists with this. <laughs> you got a whole religion made up out of, out of uh, the Sabbath day, right? Sabbath day is the seventh day religion. Yeah, seventh day Adventists, is because they believe that if you today don't believe or have a, your Sabbath on a Saturday, then you're going to hell. What kind of mess is that? <laughs> and this is why God has to address all this, because we are still, even in this day, the 20 first century still have Pharisees and Sadducees out there teaching people to fall back, fall out from under grace, back to the law. Amen. And one thing about circumcision, it's an unbearable yoke on the neck. The yoke, of course, was a sign of slavery under the law. We were told not to yoke in bondage or become entangled with a bondage, a yoke bondage. Amen? Bondage. Yes. Here to close out with, it says, uh, Romans 14, it says, why do you condemn another believer? Why do you look down on another believer? Remember, we will stand before the judgment seat of God. For the scripture says, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me. Every tongue will confess and give praise to God. Amen. Just read down amen. the rest of it, huh? Okay, yeah, I'll go down to the rest. I'm closing uh, out. Amen. Yay. <laughs> each of us will give a personal account to God. So let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. I know and am convinced on the author, the authority of the Lord Jesus, that no food in and of itself is wrong to eat. But if someone believes it is wrong, then for that person, it is wrong. And if another belief is distressed by what you eat, you are not acting in love if you eat it. Don't let your eating ruin someone for whom Christ died. Can we explain that? Yes, Let's explain ahead. that. Now, okay, so what that's saying is, you know, and, and I'm going to use alcohol for, for for more clarity, okay? Now, if somebody had a problem with alcoholism, all right, and then they come over to your house, you wouldn't crack open a bottle of wine. And that's what it's saying. Don't crack open a bottle of wine because you know that it's going to make this person fall. Don't get the alcohol out and you know this person had a problem with alcohol. You, when you do that, you are showing your brother that you don't love him or you're showing your sister that you don't love him. Amen. And so this is what this is talking yes. about. You had preached on it. Yes, sir. You had something else? Yes, I did. I want to reflect back on uh, what Pastor was preaching on Sunday. You know, God is not racist. Because when we're talking about, you know, the body of Christ and, and how it's separated and segregated because people are looking at skin color or, you know, they're, they're showing favoritism. You know, it doesn't have to be skin color. When we say God is not racist, like Pastor was saying Sunday, that there's only one race. Yep. There's only one race. So how can you be racist when there's only one race? Right. So people are, 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 number one, misunderstanding the term of race. Amen. And Amen. As, a, as a Christian, we have to understand that, you know, love conquers all. Amen. Love conquers all. And we have to, you know, continue to keep ourselves together through love, number one, and it relates to what we're talking about right here in, in uh, I think Romans 14, when we're talking about, hey, not causing our brothers and sisters to stumble or fall. Amen. How can you sit here and say, you know, just one life matter because of their skin color, but you relate it to racism? You don't understand something here. But if you love your brother or your sister regardless of what their skin color is, 
you wouldn't even make a comment on that, or you would turn it around in love and say, hey, listen, you know what, I understand what you're saying, but listen, I love you for who you are, not for what your skin color is. Amen. Amen. I'm going to lift you up and, and I'm going to, you know, bring you up here in love that your eyes may see what God needs you to see everyone as an equal. Amen? I got time to read the scripture. Okay. Well, anyway, write down it's Acts 15 and 2. I told you about that Sunday. You're going to quit doing it. <laughs> oh, y'all funny. Make me take out my chocolate. Amen. 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 Am